Hey everyone, it's April 21st. Yes, I'm still working on the COVID-19 video that I promised, but there's something more pressing right now. Father wants me to talk about something else. So it'll be several issues. And this is not an easy topic for me, but I'm going to try my best to convey it, okay? So, where do we start? This is kind of a continuation from the message that I did a couple of days ago, or simply from the last video, but I'm going to expand on it. Okay, so I've been on YouTube for four years. I've been within the End Times community for like five, six years, and I've gone through different phases myself, um, meaning, you know, when you first come in, you don't really know what you're dealing with. You're listening to all sorts of crap. You're listening to people you shouldn't be really listening to, ex uh, accepting doctrines you don't really know anything about. So five, six years later, I have a little bit of better understanding of what's going on than I had at the beginning, right? So one of the things I've noticed and been researching myself for a while is, okay, so we've got the End Times Army. Uh, what's the order? How What's the structure? How does it work? Right? How does it work? And there are several... There are several models that are out there. Some say it's two witnesses and then commanders of the 12 tribes and then this and then that and then the other. Some say it's a different order. Some It's just different. Different people have different understanding of it. And I researched it myself many times. Always come to a different conclusion. Five years later, okay, I am a firm believer that it is nothing like an earthly army. It's got nothing to do with the structure of the earthly army. Why do I say so? Because um, the model isn't based on an earthly army. The model is based on the body, like the body of Christ, right? So you can call it army, you can call it whatever you want. It's based on the body. So, Father, please help me. The human body is a collection of cells, right? Cells. And each cell within itself has stored genetic information of what it's supposed to be doing. So each cell is like its own unit. Yes, you do get like like the nervous system, right? Where there's something, some information coming from the brain to move a limb, a leg or whatever. I, I get that. But can you understand that each cell is its own unit with its own information of what to do? So that's what the army is based on. There are no generals. There are no uh, captains. There, there's nothing like that. So... Okay, so I'm watching all these people on YouTube, and there are several channels who claim to have received leadership. I'm not going to name any, but I'm sure you have noticed some of them. There's a lot of people that do not have channels who claim to be the leader, who claim to be more anointed than the others, and therefore will be leading. Um, <clears throat> I oftentimes have to deal with these people on my comment section, okay? They come to me, they state who they are, and they want me to recognize them as the leaders. So here's why I'm talking about it. Father showed me something very important a few weeks ago. Okay, so the Bible speaks of... Um, of the fact that there are two different human species on this planet. And I don't mean physically. I mean spiritually. There are those humans that came from light, and there are those humans that came from darkness. If you're not familiar with this concept, um, it is in Matthew, I think, chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, where Jesus is given the parable of the harvest, or no, parable of the field. Go look it up. He speaks of some coming from the light and some coming from the darkness. So, Father disclosed to me that we're talking about one billion people 
here on Earth either originated from light or will come back to it or whatever, but he's talking about one billion of his children on this Earth. So since there's about seven and a half billion, uh, we're outnumbered by about six to one, okay? And so there is one billion of his children on this Earth right now. And Father tells me that there is no favoritism in his kingdom. He loves everybody equally, and everybody gets the same opportunity. And so <laughs> he called out to each and every one of his child here. When I say he called out, I mean he sent his Holy Spirit to each and every one of his children. And here, it, he, he, here lies the problem, okay? So when I was called, it was September 2015. I had a profound experience that changed my life completely. Um, it wasn't a visual. It wasn't an audible. He basically spoke to me in my spirit and had me uh, experience love that he has for his children. And it, it changed me profoundly, okay, that experience. And so my response to that was, okay, Father, what do you have me do? What am I supposed to do for the kingdom? I get it. I hear you. Just give me the orders, right? How can I be useful? So that was my calling. He spoke to me in a way that I can recognize, that I can understand, that I can decipher. I'm not an audible learner. I'm not a visual learner. I need a thought, a complex thought implanted in me. And that's what he does to me. That's how he talks to me. It's like telepathy. It's, it's, it's a complete concept that comes to me out of nowhere. And I recognize it that it's not coming from my own mind because it's not. It's surprising. I'm minding my own business and suddenly there's this whole new reality going on for me. Okay. So that's me. Now, other of his children receive the call differently because they learn differently. So some gets visions, some gets audible, some gets dreams. Some get, you know, just a uniquely tailored experience to get their attention. What I've witnessed is this. While some like me answer the call in a, in a way of, okay, Father, I hear you. What do you want me to do? Some answer it or some take it as if, oh, I was called by God. I must be special. I must be special. He said to me this. He said to me that. It must mean I am somebody special in the kingdom of heaven. Right? A lot of people answer it like that. Let me tell you something, guys. We are all children of our father. Call it a son. Call it daughter. doesn't matter. So we when he acknowledges you as a son, he's just telling you you're his son. Which you are. You're his child. To top it up, there is an elect group within the children. This elect group, all of them were told they're witnesses. Witnesses of what? Of father. So many people confessed to me they were told they were witnesses. But none of them were told you're two witnesses, you're, you're my two witnesses, you're the two witnesses of Revelation. They're all told they're witnesses, okay? Witnesses of what? Of father. He needs a witness. Now, here's the deal. Jesus was also called. Don't be thinking that he was born and the next moment he was talking and walking and he knew everything. No. He had to work for it. Okay? So at some point on his spiritual journey, he was called like we are. He was called, he was baptized, right? The dove, Mount of Transfiguration, all that. But at some point he was called by Father. He was also called by the other side, by adversary. How do we know that? Because he was tempted for 40 days, right? And there's a conversation going on. Don't be thinking that somebody approached him in, in body, like in flesh, like some 
like devil put on a fleshly suit and walked over to him through the wilderness and said, Hey, Jesus, here I am. No, it was all here. It was all happening in, inside of him. And so the devil himself acknowledged that Jesus was son, son of God, right? Even he acknowledged it. So just because you're told you're a son, it doesn't mean you know who's speaking to you. Here's how you're going to know who's speaking to you. The devil's talking to him, and he's lifting him up, right? He's singling, singling him out. He's talking about being a king. He's talking about all that. He's lifting him up above his brethren. That's how you know who's talking to you. That's not our father. Our father is never going to lift up one above another. And so we're all being spoken to by both sides. One is saying, you're my son, I'm your father. You're, you're, you're an heir to, you're an joint heir. Let, let's do something really good here. And the other one is lifting you up. The other one is it's making you greater than your brothers and sisters based on something you know, based on your experience, based on your, I don't know, like different people that approached me had different theories why they are what they believe they were. And, well, there was a lot of them. And so I'm like, no, this is not what I'm being shown. We are all equal in the kingdom of heaven with Father above everybody. We are all equal. All these people in these channels talking about pecking order in heaven and somebody serving somebody else. We are all servants to our Father. And our Father is going to be in every single one of us. And so if you put your throne above your brother, you're putting your throne above the Father that's in him, and you don't want to do that. And so, how is it going to work? If there's no boss, if there's no king. And don't be telling me there's going to be king, that Jesus Christ is coming to be a king. No. The king that's coming down in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, is coming down from heaven, right? It's a spirit. It doesn't matter if you call it spirit of Christ, the spirit of Father, it doesn't matter. It's a spirit coming down into the body of Christ. Which is every single one of you, hopefully. So that is the king. You will receive the king inside of you. So... Some people take their calling as calling to action, to work on the kingdom of heaven coming down to earth. Some take it as their own gratification, like their own initiation to greatness or something, like being singled out. No, he came to all of his children at one point or another. Every time I'm being told by somebody that they are the leader and I don't acknowledge it, they all play the same, they all play the same cards. First, they're going to say that I'm a, I'm a woman, so I have to acknowledge them as males. Secondly, they play, you know, the I'm more spiritual than you card because of my age, I'm 36 and they're usually older, or because they've studied the Bible for so long, or because of some experience they had and not, that they claim I didn't have, then they play the age card usually, if they don't play the spiritual card. Um, It's nasty. It's always the same story. Their experience, greater than mine, my age disqualifies me to even know what I'm talking about, my gender, you're a woman, 
And some of them tell me that if I don't recognize them as the leaders, I must be talking to the devil. I must be of a different spirit than them. Well, let me tell you, if the spirit talking to you is lifting you up above your brethren, damn well I'm not talking to the spirit. You can count on that. If you're being told you're going to call the shots, you're going to run the kingdom of God, and not God run the kingdom of God, then definitely I'm not talking to the same source as you. So call me whatever. It doesn't work. The only spirit that ever wants to lift you up above your brethren is the devil, adversary, whatever you want to call it. Okay? So whenever you're told that, that you're going to be something more, you are something more, I know who's talking to you. It's nasty. If you think you can place your throne above mine and not insult the Father in me by doing that, you're wrong. So many have done it. The kingdom of heaven needs certain roles to be fulfilled that is true there are apostles there are teachers okay an apostle is well the word itself comes from um greek words that means to be sent forth okay an apostle at the times when jesus was walking the earth was a word that everybody knew in the roman empire because it was an office where if the roman empire conquered new land an apostle of the Roman Empire was sent to that newly acquired land to imp to like introduce um, the culture of the Roman Empire and maybe choose civil servants that were going to take care of it. Oh, Lucy, me, what you doing? Right. So the apostle was somebody who was enforcing a cultural, the culture of the of the kingdom to be implemented in the new land. That's an apostle. That's why Jesus had the 12 apostles. He sent them to acquire the land and impose the culture of the heavenly kingdom on these newly acquired lands. That's why he gave them the ability to cast out unclean spirits. People think this is about just people. No, they went forth and told the spirits that were in charge of the land to get lost because this land is now acquired for the children of the Most High God. Okay. And so the apostles, they're not there to tell everybody what to do. No, 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 no. You're supposed to receive your information from your father about your portion of the work. And you will find out that it is in harmony with all the other people's work. But the apostles are there to represent the kingdom outwardly and to. You know, make sure that the culture of the heavenly kingdom is being applied correctly. But there are no generals. There are no... It's not like they call the shots. Not at all. And then you got the teachers. And the teachers teach. And that's about it. Other than that, within the kingdom, everybody is responsible for their own... For their own life. For their own growth with father and father has perfect plan for them if they would only ask so we pray right in the lord's prayer that well thy kingdom come on earth that is it is as it is in heaven we are religiously praying for the kingdom of heaven to come down to earth so How is that going to be if most people don't even believe such thing is possible? In Matthew 6.33, we're told, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness, and everything else will be given to you. And so, during this time when people are locked up at home, Father tells me most of his children are just sitting there, either waiting for rapture or just watching the news, doing absolutely nothing. Being worried about earthly stuff. He said to you, 
to seek out first the heavenly kingdom. What does that mean? When you wake up in the morning, go, Heavenly Father, what can I do for the advancement of the kingdom on earth today? What would you have me do? Please direct me. Please talk to me. Do this every morning, and I'm quite sure you're going to get little jobs. For some people, this can be simply financial contribution to somebody who's out in the field. For somebody, it can be physical work. For somebody, it can be spiritual work, where you're working in the spirit. Yes, yeah, some people actually have this as a job description, right? Whatever it is, go ask what is your part in the heavenly kingdom, because we are supposed to bring it down here. Each play a part. Each have been given a piece. There are no generals. You all should have the Spirit of Christ in you. The Messiah already came. Now it's your turn with the Spirit of Christ to bring the kingdom down. Seek Father. Seek the kingdom. Some people, really, not some, loads of Father's children are approaching this whole thing in the manner of, Father, take care of me. Father, why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? Father, why aren't you doing this for me or that for me? I I was called by you. I Why isn't anything happening? You were called to do your part. Why aren't you asking what to do? Why do you assume you know what to do? Don't ask what Father can do for you. Ask what you can do for the kingdom and everything else will be added to you. Everything else will be added to you. Just do your part. Participate. Ask. <laughs>